Welcome at uh, the stage in Almkerk in the Netherlands. Uh, we're here to tell you a little bit about Robot One. I'm Arend Koekoek from Pixform Robotics. Behind the camera is Case. You cannot see him, but he is there. Down there is Cindy, who's managing the talk. And we have Naomi down there, who's helping us to make everything working fine. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit about Robot One. This is the machine. It's a solar powered smart biology vehicle. Um, it uh, processes roughly one hectare per hour. It runs roughly all day on one solar charge with the battery packs included. It has 10 arms, which can be managed individually and they can be mounted with different types of tools. Down here, you see streamer heads. Each head can be positioned basically anywhere you want it. In this case, uh, the three heads are down and the other heads are up and uh, you can do the processing. It's now driving in the wide mode. You can also have it in transportation mode so that you can um, use a car ambulance to transport it to the field and, and set it up the way you want it. Now, <clears throat> down here, you see the heads in uh, transport mode. You can also have them linked together uh, and that way you can process them like a, a side shift the hats can move up and down in speeds of roughly one meter per second. So that way you can have uh, the processing speed of one hectare uh, per hour always. Now, the hoeing is typically the mostly used operation currently to reduce weeds in the field just by going through the soil and making it bare again. So, so that way removing the weeds. Now we tested using clay type soils and sandy type soils which worked uh, quite well uh, this year. So, so that was an important thing to, to validate in this year. Um, so we're gonna do a lot more on that next year. Now, what we saw with the projects we did with several partners is that they want different types of, of processing in the, the weeds. This is the stinger uh, application where you just push back a weed into the soil so that it can be resorbed and function as a, as a, a feeding for the soil as well. Uh, so that, that's one way. Uh, another application that was engineered for, by a partner was this uh, uh, gripper head, which can be used to remove weeds, but it can also be used for planting um, the initial small small plugs into the soil. So by, by apply, uh, mounting this appliance to the head, you can con easily convert the machine from a, a, a a weed remover to a planting machine. So this is a nice way where uh, other partners work with our solution to manage this. Now, as I said, there are different ways to reduce, uh, remove weeds. You can also uh, increase the climate resilience of a, of a, uh, a field by not removing uh, the weeds to bare uh, soil, but to manage them back to, to go below the, the actual crop you want by just streaming it and basically making a blend, which then can be resorbed into the soil to actually feed the soil and buffer the water that is inside. Now to do this, you need to follow, be able to follow the top of the canopy of the crops to manage it uh, in, in, in slices basically. And we have ultrasound, ultrasound sensors to, to follow this, but we also have the LiDAR and we have the RGB cameras on top of it so that you can use very different ways to manage this height. So in this, in this food, you can see that it can do this all at this operating speed of one meter per second. This way, making sure the machine will always be able to process roughly one hectare per hour. That's roughly the way it works. Now, the way we develop this, basically is by building a virtual twin of this farm that you saw down there. So down here you see a view of the virtual twin. Uh, we didn't, <laughs> so down here you see, you see that it's, it's basically feeding the data which it gets from the central platform into the machine. And then the software can work uh, to, 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 do the, to translate this into the actions which you see down here. Down here you see an example that actually sim the simulator removes the, 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 the plants which are cut by the knives, basically processed by the application. Now, fortunately, we didn't invent this ourselves. This, uh, this technique was uh, invented by, uh, by NVIDIA in a drive uh, um, 
program, which is also used by, for example, Mercedes-Benz to develop their auto autonomous vehicles, but then for urban environment. What we did is we made an adaption from the same system to the agricultural environment, and that way enabling developers of both tools and software and biological applications to be able to validate their tools and their solution uh, outside of the season. So normally you develop something in wintertime, you would have to wait until summertime to be able to validate what you're doing. With this solution, you're able to record it in the summertime, develop the tools in wintertime and test and validate them so that when you're coming into the season again, you're able to, uh, to, to basically start working right away with the, with a validated tool. So that's what this solution set brings you when you're a partner of us and working to, to develop the systems. All right. And it, I realize it's a little bit of time to get to get to cope with this, but talk with us later if you want to know more. Now, the last stuff you saw was for technical people, but uh, when we want this robot, we want to think of it as a uh, as a uh, colleague of yours, which starts working on a farm, and that's typically not a programmer, in our opinion. That will be a farmer type person, and this farmer has to teach the robot to. to do, do, with what plants to do what thing. So basically as a biological processing. So what it has to learn is a lot of, uh, uh, the way a lot of plants look, what they look like. And you don't want to be a programmer to teach this to the machine. You basically just want to take photographs of every plant or at a certain time, feed it the photographs, and then explain on the photograph using a very simple drawing tool, what, the plant looks like and in this case these are already labeled so down here the farmer simply or the biologist simply draws boxes around the plants and says well this is the plant and this is trained or uh, rehearsed by the robot and now we're gonna do a do a quick test with it to verify that it actually remembers what we've taught it just like you learn a, a child to write in kindergarten teach the robot how to read or write in this way. So he, he's now going to have to do the test on the green bean, which is the example we, we have in this case. Um, so it has to, to, to show us that it knows the green beans. And ta-da, it knows the green beans, what it looks like. When, if we would start actually processing the soil, we will find out that it will remove these, but it will also remove these plants, the crops. So we're going to have to teach it a bit more, just like your teacher did in kindergarten. Said, well, this, this one you did correct. Uh, this one you didn't do correct yet. You, you, then you simply retrain it. Now, an extra advantage which we saw in biology is that it's not just about the image. There are more things to know about these plants which you have to capture. So what we do in this system, we allow you to add things like fungi and things like diseases you saw, which you can add to the image and then also use. So to sum up what I've told you, we are able to detect plants, we're able to hoe them to remove these, uh, these weeds. We are able to process them in a different way using the streamer. And we're able to collect the data and simulate the processing in that way, improving continuously and teaching a robot and making this robot come on board into your company. So this is roughly what I wanted to tell you. Now, to be sure that you don't think this is a joke and this is real, this is the real machine. Give you roughly an idea of how big it is. And uh, yeah, unfortunately we cannot show you everything because it's winter season and it's inside, but we can give you a rough idea of the way these these arms uh, work, for example, without killing anybody while driving. Can you make them move? Yeah, so the, what you see down here is them, the, the arms moving together uh, uh, up and down, and you can also move them individually and, the, and, and, and also do the side shift individually per arm. So that way, reducing the time that is required to set a new configuration, for example, when you go from a from a crop uh, uh, a lane width of 50 centimeters to uh, seven, th 37 centimeters, uh, you could just automatically do that and without having to reconfigure it. 
mean, also means that when you use the visual, so, so the, 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 the the vision to exactly determine where the crop rows were, you can basically use this uh, feature to to configure it automatically. Another thing is that when you have the 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 the, 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 the sides of an acre, where you're not uh, having the full three meters uh, in in stowed crops, you can automatically pull up two arms. Yeah. There I are think, questions. Yes, there are questions. So maybe you can uh, stay at the robot. That's quite nice. Yeah. The first question we have is how do you position the tools? Is there a row line detector? Yeah, yeah, there are. Uh, the row line detection is done in, uh, actually, you can do it in two ways with this system. Or three, actually. You can use the sonar, you can use the LIDAR, and you can use the, the RGB cameras that are on top of here. Um, and we combine these images together with the data which you already have in the system. You saw the simulator. Basically, what we do is we, we pull out every data that we have, augment that to the, to the GPS data, and then, in addition, add the, uh, the, 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 the layers that are captured in real, real time. So that way we can increase our resolution beyond the one to two centimeter precision of RTK to, to go towards uh, one millimeter precision, which we really is, is the resolution we are aiming at with this vehicle. Okay. Which type of farms are you targeting? Are you targeting farmers or land contractors? That's an interesting question. Um, we, basically, we are targeting, targeting everybody who wants to uh, manage their uh, land without using uh, artificial uh, uh, chemistry. So, so we want we want uh, people who want to take care of crops, uh, and especially without, for, uh, for yeah. them, we have our onboarding program. Yeah, yeah. So, the the, the clients we're working for now are typically uh, innovative farmers. Uh, so they are they're, they're working on biological uh, produce mostly uh, because that's where the value is uh, uh, right now, and you can sim relatively simply get that done with this machine. So I hope this answers your question. Okay, another question is, what sensors do you use for weed detection? Do you use multi-spectral cameras? Yeah, uh, we're not, uh, currently we're, we're limited to, uh, to the basic uh, RGB cameras that are in there. There are projects coming up and you saw this already with the different tool hats. We have a lot of mounting rails to add new cameras. The software is prepared to process multi uh, or a wide spectral uh, imagery uh, but but we're open to to testing this and and uh, in general I think this is relatively easy to to check with us so if you want something like that please come back to us to the booth and let's talk about this on how to add this to the system yeah how many labeled images or terabytes do you need to handle a new crop <laughs> Uh, uh, with in general, um, we're we're not the inventors of deep learning, so we just uh, enable uh, this technology. Uh, what we've seen is that you need uh, roughly uh, ten to twenty thousand labels to to do a proper processing. Uh, fortunately, uh, when we, what we've seen with the projects that we did now, it's very easy to capture these. Uh, or 100,000 uh, images or individual plants. Um, so th that that's working. We have a lot of tools to make it easier to label them. So we have a couple of automatic labelers which enable you to give by example to teach them. For example, you when we've trained a two-week data set of a plant, we the, after that we start uh, capturing three-week-old plants which are slightly different. Then we can automatically label them. Due to due to the recognition that's going on down there, so we can grow labeled imagery very rapidly. Right. I hope this answers your question. What's the autonomy of your robot, and what's the weight of your battery pack? <laughs> wow. Um, the the, auto, the autonomy. I, I I think in terms of driving range or driving hours. Uh, I think you're referring it. What we've tested is that with the pack with that's in this machine, and uh, normally that's a five kilowatt hour pack. Um, you can drive from April until October um, all day. You can drive all day uh, and go onto the field with the same energy level in the battery pack as when you go out of the 
uh, the field. Uh, in the winter time, we've added now we've 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 added uh, five more kilowatt hours uh, to be able to process a, a regular day, and then you see that we have to recharge it. At least that's in the Netherlands. Of course, in sunny side of our Europe, France or Spain, this will be a very different story because it really has to do with solar panels on top. So I hope this answers your question a little bit um, now. Probably. Um, how many units per year do you plan to deliver of the robot? Oh, yeah, that's always a, always an interesting thing. Everybody's talking about volume in this case. Um, we we feel that a robot is an employee. So when we 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 uh, employ our robots, um, we currently will will try five robots this year to see uh, to get them to work at farmers, and then next year we're gonna go to the to the volume series, um, and it's expected to be around 150 in 2022, and then we'll see what happens uh, after that. Okay, there are two more questions left, and I think uh, we are done <laughs> then. Uh, does your classification work in real time? And then it yeah. says one to two Earth. Yeah, One, uh, the, the, our classification my engine actually works uh, at uh, 50 milliseconds uh, detection um, for, e for each unit. And we have a beautiful, you cannot see it down there, but there, there's a complete data center inside this machine. So if you want more performance, you can simply add processing units and you can add more cameras. And what we've done now is we're able to do three meter wide uh, processing or the inference at uh, one meter per second driving speed with, uh, with beans, uh, as you can see. So um, it next year or this year, we're gonna go uh, working on, on the carrot cases and there we're gonna see that we need to add processing power for the high resolution that's down there. So um, that's roughly what we do down there. Yeah, okay. I think we have to wrap it up because our time has left. Nah. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you in the booth and maybe talk some more. Um, this is our team. Cindy, case behind the camera, Naomi. All right. Hope to see you. I'm Aaron Cook from Pixel Farming Robotics. Hope to see you in the booth.